Well, good Tuesday morning. It's nice enough to come on my back deck this morning and do the show from here. Thank you for joining me. I think we only got a couple more Ecclesias to go through and then we're into the throne section, which is awesome. The next one's Philadelphia. David's Key, Isaiah 22, 15 through 25 refers to the disposing of Shebna and the raising up of Elikim to be the treasure of the temple or minister of the court. See Isaiah 36, 22. This letter moves in the temple where the treasures are, where safety is found and where worship is carried on. It is impossible to escape the inference that the Philadelphian Ecclesia is composed only of Jews who are members of God's synagogue as every other consideration points in this direction, we may conclude that all of the ecclesias are Jewish. Each will worship a, in a synagogue, which has a messenger who will read to them. Endurance, sorry about my nose, allergies, still got them. Endurance will be a cardinal virtue in that day of stress and distress. Seven times are we reminded of it. And the references are here. Um, I like to go over them, but you can go over them yourself. What I'm saying is that you should get a chord and commentary and go along with this with me. Then you're gonna see what I'm reading and then you're gonna hear what I'm reading. You're gonna go read over it with me. And that's a good thing. I know some of you do, which is great. I am on page 386. I keep forgetting to say the page, but I'm on page 386 of the Concordant Commentary. He that endures to the end shall be saved. Matthew chapter 10, 22, Matthew 24, 13, Mark 13, 13. In this present economy, salvation depends entirely on faith in Christ, the faith of Jesus Christ. The English idiom, to keep out, conveys a false impression to many. Here it does not mean to keep from, but to keep those who are in, in the trial so that they come out victoriously. So literally to be kept in the trial, to come out victoriously. Well, we are a prime example of that as members of the body of Christ. We are kept in our trials. We are kept in our distresses and necessities in order to bring us through victoriously when we are snatched away. And the requital happens at the days of Christ. So once we come through all these trials, believe me, there's a greater glory coming. When we're snatched away to meet our Lord in the air, it's not condemnation or judgment for us. Right now, our lessons are being learned now through these trials and afflictions. Then they will have to go through that time of trouble and go through the whole thing in order to come out victoriously. The ones who are preserved for that thousand years, if that makes sense to you. The English, yeah, the English idiom to keep out. Okay. The conqueror with, with but little power who hides in the temple during the hour of trial will be openly acknowledged in the kingdom by giving him a place of prominence and power like the great pillars. Jashin, Jashin and Boaz... It may be that they will have a special place of authority over the vast crowd who serve him day and night in, the, in his temple. Unveiling chapter 7, verse 15. The 144,000 are sealed on their foreheads. Unveiling chapter 7, verse 3, which exempts them from the judgment of the locusts. Unveiling chapter 9, verse 4. This seal is probably the Father's name. In the new earth, the slaves and the lambkin are thus sealed. Unveiling 22.4. On the other hand, the false prophet causes all to receive the emblem of the wild beast. Unveiling 13.16. Marking them for God's indignation. Unveiling chapter 14, verse 9. Only those who refuse this symbol live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Unveiling chapter 20, verse 4. So when that's fully implemented, the mark of the beast, the emblem of the wild beast, 
Those who are taking it are, do not have part in that thousand years. They are given over to God's indignation. Simple as that. Okay, the Church of Laodicea. God's creative original, which is Christ. See Colossians 1.15. Note, he is called the orig origin or beginning three times in this scroll in the phrase origin and consummation. Unveiling chapter 21, verse 6, unveiling 22, 13. To spew as a result of an emetic, E-M-E-T-I-C, naked in the sense of scant scantily clad, not necessarily nude. Okay, I don't know why he puts that in there. I think because... In the sense of naked, well, naked from the inside, meaning they're exposed from the inside. So that's what he's referring to there. Not a physical thing. The promises to the conquerors increase in proportion to the apostasy with which they contend. In Ephesus, they are promised a place in the paradise of the new earth. This will doubtless be, be shared by all, all the other conquerors as well. In Laodicea, the nauseating ecclesia, the conqueror is promised a place with Christ on his millennial throne. This is the highest place to which an Israelite could aspire. Matthew chapter 20, verse 21. This is fulfilled when the wages are paid. Unveiling chapter 11, verse 18. And the saints reign with him the thousand years. Unveiling 20, verse 4. The low state of spirituality is denoting by, denoted by the hearing ear. Job said, I heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes sees thee. Job chapter 42, verse 5. All right, we're into the throne section next, which is really powerful. So you can see these seven ecclesias are important to understand in the sense of what is coming for them, the Israelites of these ecclesias during that thousand years. So they'll have their place. Each one will have their place. And if they're not part of it, God will spew them out of his mouth in that sense. So you're hearing it. It's beautiful stuff. To go through it with me is even better. So grace and peace. Have a beautiful Tuesday. Enjoy your day. We will see you tomorrow.